everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that has a host who's feeling better and thank you for your patience. Let's do this thing. Today in the news, Halo legend Joseph Staten is leaving Microsoft. If you don't know who this is, I'm talking Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3, recently came back in 2020 to work on Infinite and is now leaving. We're grateful for Joseph's contributions to the Halo franchise and Xbox as a whole. The statement from a Microsoft spokesperson reads, we wish him all the best in his new adventure. Staten also shared his sentiments on Twitter, stating that he'll have more info to share soon and thanked his Xbox colleagues for their understanding and support. His departure follows the lackluster post-launch of Halo Infinite and the layoffs that impacted 343 Industries in January. Staten had initially transferred to Xbox's public division, but now he's leaving Microsoft altogether. I think everyone's pretty curious about what he'll do next, but for the time being, he deserves the rest, especially after Halo Infinite's launch and all the drama surrounding that game. It's been pretty rough over there, so good luck with the future. In other news, we've been talking about this for a while. We finally have a resolution and a big update. If you're in the EU or the UK, if you're just in Europe in general, huge news in the world of Nintendo Joy-Con Drift, which has been a big issue and there's been a lot of legal cases on it and now we finally have a resolution. According to The Verge, the company, Nintendo, previously only repaired faulty Joy-Cons in these countries for free if they had an active warranty. Now, Nintendo will repair Joy-Cons regardless of if the drift is caused by a defect or normal wear and tear. And this is a big victory for European consumers because Joy-Con hardware issues have been an issue since the launch of the Switch all over the world. And it was something that people wondered, did Nintendo just knowingly release faulty hardware? There are countless videos about what drift is, but if you're curious, again, I've explained it before, Literally just, it looks like your joystick is stationary, but on screen, it's a moving. In 2021, the European Consumer Organization, BEUC, called on the European Commission to investigate the issue, while a study from a UK-based consumer group later found that a design flaw causes stick drift. And look, I wanna give Nintendo the benefit of the doubt. I don't think they actively tried to scam anyone, just like I don't think anyone getting in a red ring of death on an Xbox or whatever was intentional or some sort of malfeasance on their part. It's just a thing that happens. I guarantee no one was testing a year's worth of Switch play to see if there'd be any kind of like drift or problems like that. But it did happen enough that it does seem kind of like, maybe, maybe they should have done something about this immediately. But for their part, Nintendo has been stepping up and has been trying to fix this issue and has apologized numerous times. So this seems to be the last thing we'll hear about it. And hopefully if your Joy-Con breaks, you'll get it fixed and everything should be good. Meanwhile, let's stick in this world of companies trying to sell you things and it's confusing as to how we got, where we got, but here we are. Resident Evil 4 and microtransactions. That's right, in addition to Mercenaries Mode, Capcom also delivered 11 new pieces of paid DLC titled Exclusive Upgrade Tickets that allow players to speed up the upgrade process. The Upgrade Ticket DLC Steam page reads, to gun enthusiasts, knife collectors, and lovers of weapons of any and all kinds, here's your ticket to the gun show, specifically a ticket to be redeemed at the merchant shop. With this, you will have access to a weapons exclusive upgrade at any time, regardless of the weapons level. Not only that, but once unlocked, the upgrade itself is free of charge. So if you thought the merchant's fetch quests were too burdensome, Congrats! By spending some of your actual money and not your time, you can quickly upgrade your weapons. And this isn't really a first for Capcom. They've done this all the time. They love microtransactions. Village featured a purchasable survivor's resources pack. Resident Evil 2 had a literal key that could unlock all the in-game rewards. And at the moment, it's all right. I'm not too offended by this. I think it's one of those things where as long as it stays supplemental and doesn't go beyond upgrades or resources or, you know, this romance novel Leon, then it's fine. Mercenaries is just an additional mode. Again, it falls in that supplemental thing and it isn't really game changing and world changing. So it's fine, but there is a line there. And I'm always a little stressed that Capcom is willing to just be like walking across it. But for the time being, 
It's whatevs. Anyway, it's Monday, so it's time for your new releases. What do you get when you blend Sherlock Holmes and HP Lovecraft? Why, Frog wears Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, releasing April 11th. This game, a remake of the 2007 version, features updated graphics, animations, and an expanded storyline. It even has new mechanics, including, and I quote, unique and sanity gameplay. Move over, Robert Downey Jr. There's a hot new emo Sherlock in town. Also on Tuesday, it's time to return to the grid with Tron Identity. This visual novel adventure follows Query, a detective program tasked with uncovering a mystery that threatens the future of the grid as we know it. Players will solve identity disc puzzles, question suspects, and make choices that not only influence the story as they go, but lead to various endings. Add a stunning art style to all that, and you've easily got one of the year's most interesting digital novel games. And then Game Boy Advance Lovers Rejoice, the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection finally arrives this Friday on the 14th. This bundle includes 10 action-packed tactical RPG games, plus additional features like a gallery of illustrations and music from across the Battle Network series. Perfect for Mega Man fans and those looking to give these games a shot for the first time. Like me, Santel is really keen on this potentially being a new gentleman's gaming club. So if you're interested, let me know down below. Anyway, that is it for 5-Minute Gaming News. I'll see y'all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.